Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today to take a look at the new Asus Store Drive Store 4 Pro Generation 2. Now this one has a new CPU. It has a four drive base so we can put up to four hard drives and a really cool easy to use dashboard which if you haven't seen it already you are about to see it in just a few moments. So that being said, let's go straight for it. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated it and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code, which will give you the best price possible at this moment. So just in case, the link will be down below. So this is the DriveStore 4 Pro Generation 2, which means that there is a Generation 1. And for those that already have the Generation 1, it's an awesome machine we have reviewed right over here. I will leave a link right over here just in case you missed that out and a link down below as well. And for those looking to purchase the first personal cloud, I will leave links down below for the Generation 2, but also for the Generation 1, which at this moment, with some promotions and so on might be an interesting deal and it's still an awesome machine. This one is more powerful, especially on the CPU. Actually, let's take a look at the screen and before we dive into the dashboard, if we look right over here in terms of specifications, this is the machine that I've got right over here with me, DriveStore 4 Pro Generation 2, which has the new Realtek 1619 a 1.7 gigahertz quad core CPU which is awesome and if we take a look at generation 1 it has the Realtek 1296 at 1 it also has 2 gigabytes of RAM while we are right over here and it has a 2.5 gig Ethernet port at the back. Actually, talking about at the back, we also have USB port and we have one USB port at the front also with a button which is a copy button. If you carry around your external SSD or hard drive and you want to back it up at the end of the day just to make sure that you have everything and you don't lose it, you don't need to be dragging files around. You just connect it right over here, press the button and we can back it up. There are several options. We can back up from the drive to the NAS, from the NAS to the drive and we can create a synchronization so everything will be equal in both which is awesome. But these are just some of the things that we can do with our own personal cloud. And now that we have seen specifications and some differences between both models, taking a look at the unboxing experience is quite simple. It comes really well packed as usual from Asus Store. Once we open, we will find the NAS unit in this particular case, the Drive Store 4 Pro Generation 2, also known as 3304 version 2. Besides the NAS, we will have the power adapter, a Ethernet cable. I believe that there are some screws, a manual and honestly, I believe that is it. But you can see by some images because I do record everything. Now, in terms of the assembly, it's really easy. I'm using the Toshiba N300 hard drives, 8 terabytes each. I'll leave links down below just in case you want to check that out. And it's easy as just removing the four bays that we have right over here and then putting the hard drive. By the way, we don't need any screws. We just need to remove those plastic grommets and then put in the hard drive, put back the plastic grommets and it will secure the hard drive really well and then we will put the hard drive back into the base just slide it in and that is it we are ready to start using actually there's one step missing which is we need to plug in the power adapter we need to plug in the ethernet cable and then we will need to press this button right over here by the way at the front we also have led indication with all the activity network and hard drives and whatnot but once we press this button we are ready to start using our personal cloud now there is a initialization process which is required on any NAS unit asus store has a really friendly software and in no time we have the NASH ready. I did everything manually. There is the option to do it automatically, but manually I'm able to select everything, all the settings that I want. And by manual, don't be intimidated because it's still very easy. We just need to select a few options and then almost at the end we will and then almost at the end we will select the RAID mode that we want to use. In this particular case I'm using RAID 5, but we will check that on the dashboard in just a few moments. 
and basically that is it once we finish it up we have our personal cloud ready to start using it to back up our computers to back up our pictures from all the family phones and so on now let's take a look at the dashboard for those that already are familiar with the asus store dashboard i would suggest to take a look at the timestamp and just go fast forward for those that don't take a look because it's really easy and simple to use here at the right i've got this menu open which i can close like this it has this indicator right over here and we have several options at the glance i can see the storage manager which shows me that i only have one volume by choice i could have four volumes for example but i decided to have one in rate five and it's a uh, space available 21.73 terabytes this is already counting that i'm on raid five so if one of the hard drives fails i still have every detail or all my data is on the other three so i can remove the failed hard drive put in a new one and it will rebuild all my system without losing any data and this is the beauty of a system like this we also have the activity monitor with the cpu usage and memory and then online users and important locks right over here we have options for the user which is logged in which i can create more users i can give different access to different people on my family friends whatever i want for work environment for teams and whatnot and right over here we also have the search button and one of my favorite buttons which is the preferences but we can see the preferences in different ways this way and if i go to the settings i can see it this way so there are several ways that we can see the same menu and this is great if i prefer this way i will use it like this if i prefer the other way i will use it like that and in terms of overall usage of the dashboard this is it now i also have a lot of options here on the screen one of my favorites is this one right over here app central which will allow me to install a lot of apps and although the nash initially 20 years ago i don't know the first time that i touched nash they were used to store data basically that was it but these days besides being able to store data pictures and whatnot that we have covered i can also install a lot of services at this moment for example i did install adguard home i did install plex um, media server and also i have right over here i can minimize this the photo gallery from asus store which is if i press right over here it will give me access to the old configuration i didn't do it yet it's just an example for yourself right over there because in terms of app uh, it's really easy once we are on the app store for example i can just go to all apps or i can search by categories if i want to do that but all apps and then i just need to select the app and press a button and it will install that easily so in no time besides being able to put all my data right over here i can also have some services like plex server home assistant adguard home by all whatever i decide and that's a really really cool thing to do now one of the things that i would like to mention is you can have access on the asus store website you just need to select the model and check the apps that you will be able to install depending on the hardware that it has but besides that one of the things that we have in terms of flexibility is that we can install docker and we can also install port trainer to manage docker images so in terms of apps besides those that already come in the asus store ecosystem we can also install on docker and if you know docker it has a lot of apps so it opens a world of possibilities and that is just awesome now i feel that i've talked enough about apps so let's close it in but in my opinion it's one of the biggest advantages of having a system such as this because just putting data here although it's important is a bit boring but if i have a lot of services integrated it's really really cool now if we take a look at some of the things right over here probably settings is one of the most important where we can um, check out everything and configure exactly the way that i want i know that for those that are here for the first time we'll look at this and we'll be overwhelmed because if i take just a look at the hardware i have right over here the system where i can change led brightness buzzers and whatnot energy control i can select all this power i can select all this fan control which is a really low fan in terms of noise i can control all this so just in one menu there is a lot that we can do and it is overwhelming but 
it's really simple to use as we can see everything it's quite explanatory or self-explanatory and we can just grow with a system such as this and it's something that we have been doing uh, over the years growing and learning and adapting and then creating new things and wanting I want this service that I heard a friend has let me install on my NAS which is something that it's connected 24 7 with a low power consumption and just awesome now access control is where we can control the users I can create new users I can give different access I can create groups of users like a team at work a family uh, cousins and whatnot I can create all that and give specific options so I just want this group or this element to access these folders and that is it or I want to create another user and I can give full access like I do F which I don't know if it's but we have the freedom to do that right over here. And then besides creating users, I can, for example, create specific folders for those users and for those groups that they can work right over there, but that they will not mess the other folders that we have right over here. So this is really cool in terms of freedom. The activity monitors just so that we can monitor everything that is going on. We can go individually as well. We can have a look at the processes and whatnot. Uh, it's a bit more boring things but for those a bit nerdy here it is everything available in terms of the apps we have covered online help backup and restore which is one of the most important probably a bit boring but it's something that we do once we scheduled and then it will do everything for us so no worries whatsoever by the way if you have missed the video that i did yesterday i will leave a link right down below where we have talked about being able to back up our windows computers for free using a asus store software Software. and if we have a NASH great if we don't you can use the software as well and it's a really easy way to schedule backups from our computers like we do on Mac OS time machine but with Asus Store software but in terms of backup we have all sorts of backups that we can do right over here and probably the most common will be the internal backup which I can create backups from things that I've got right here on this unit and the external backup which I can connect a external hard drive and then back up certain folders which are critical to me to that particular hard drive and I know that I'm safe. In an ideal scenario, I would, besides that backup, have another unit similar to this or the same unit on a different remote location and then I could do a remote backup on a daily basis, weekly or monthly basis and I know that if I lose a disk I'm okay, if I lose all disks I've got a local backup but if everything and hopefully not everything burns right over here or is destroyed by some reason we have another backup remotely and that is an ideal scenario which I've talked here on the channel probably you have heard that so in terms of backups we have all the options and of course we can use the software from Asus Store as well then we have the control on the external devices if we connect right over here we will have access and we can uh, control them all sorts of devices not only external hard drives the file explorer is something interesting I usually don't use it this way because I usually use it on my explorer for example this is my Windows computer you can see the Asus store with 24 terabytes all SSDs really really cool units link down below as well hopefully I can put all these links and uh, if I want to access storage for example I will go to the Asus store which is this one right over here but instead of saving inside one of my folders I will be saving right over there so I've got this folder here the public which I've created a few folders but let's create a new folder and let's call it new folder which is exactly what we have right over here but this is in Portuguese and right now it's in English and right now I could start working right over here I could create I don't know, a text document and whatnot and well you got the idea I don't need to use the file explorer from the NASH I can just use the computer and access the NASH like I would access an internal hard drive which speeds up to 2.5 gigabit roughly 300 megabytes per second reads and on writes which is awesome now we can close this and if we go to services this is something really important as well probably boring I know but if you want to access with a Mac computer you will be able to activate this if you want NFS FTP or any other surface basically if you have any device it doesn't matter the operating system that we have we will be able to access from and to it without any issues we just need to okay I can't access with my Mac Google 
you will need to enable AFP. Okay, AFP, here it is, enable AFP. And basically this is the way that we grow and that we learn with these type of devices, which although they are simple, they have a lot of options and they will allow us to do this. Now, storage manager, just want to show you something right over here, which is the uh, information of the view volume that we have created. It will show us 21.73 storage available terabytes because we have four times eight, but one is reserved for backup. So we only have 20, only 21 terabytes. If you do this calculation on any cloud service, it will cost you a lot per month. Right over here on the volume, we have some more information about our hard drives. We can manage them and we can change the rate volume. Have in mind that if we change, we will delete all the data at this moment. So faulty drives tolerated one. We have four Toshibas right over here in 300. A great experience over the years with Toshiba N300. So I highly recommend in terms of noise, in terms of durability, really, really awesome. So let's close this one right over here. And then we we have the system information, easy sync manager, snapshot center. All of these are not less important than others, but I do see that I'm running out of time and half of you already left the video because it is a bit boring. The exciting part is not watching someone touching the system, but it is touching the system itself, which is really, really cool. Installing our apps, personalizing our units, having a great fun with a device such as this. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully you've enjoyed to know a little bit better about the DriveStore 4 Pro Generation 2. For those that have the Generation 1, I wouldn't run buying this because you have a great device on hands. And that's why I said at the beginning of the video, if you are wondering which unit to purchase, check out both Generation 2, Generation 1. Check out the prices and what you will use it mainly for. If it's for a Plex server or MB server or Jellyfin server, then probably I would give an extra and go for the generation two. But if you are using for storage and for home assistant and other services like that, without any huge transcoding in terms of video, then check out generation two. It's a great machine. If the video was helpful, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.